Good afternoon, Southwest Florida. I'm Bree Walling. This Naples Herald lunch break is sponsored by our friends at Fusillo Kia of Cape Coral. This afternoon, we'll tell you about E. coli making it down to Florida by way of tainted romaine lettuce, the 26th annual Stamp Out Hunger Drive set for this weekend, and more. Today is Thursday, May 10th, and this is the lunch break. E. coli tainted romaine lettuce may have made its way into Florida, according to a new bulletin from the CDC. Yesterday, it was reported that the ongoing E. coli outbreak, believed to be linked to romaine lettuce from around Yuma, Arizona, is now being blamed for 149 cases of the illness in 29 states, with Florida one of its newest additions this week. Florida, Minnesota, North Dakota, and Texas were all states where the illness was reported for the first time, as 28 new cases in 12 states were reported this week. CDC officials have been warning against eating romaine lettuce from Yuma since April when the outbreak was first suspected. The recent rash of E. coli cases around the country are being blamed for one death in California, along with 64 hospitalizations. There has been no recall on any products as of yet. The CDC is giving out recommendations to consumers to try to curb the outbreak from continuing. They recommend do not eat or buy romaine lettuce unless you can confirm it is not from the Yuma growing region. Romaine lettuce has a shelf life of several weeks and contaminated lettuce could still be in homes, stores, and restaurants. Many product labels often do not identify growing regions, so do not eat or buy romaine lettuce if you don't know where it was grown. The advice includes whole heads, hearts of romaine, chopped lettuce, baby romaine, organic romaine, and salads and salad mixes containing romaine lettuce. If you do not know if the lettuce in a salad mix is romaine, do not eat it. The National Association of Letter Carriers, in collaboration with the U.S. Postal Service, the Harry Chapman Food Bank, and the United Way of Lee, Hendry Glades, and Okeechobee Counties, is putting on its 26th annual Letter Carrier Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive this Saturday, May 12th. The NALC's Stamp Out Hunger Drive is the nation's largest single-day food drive, with last year's drive resulting in carriers collecting over 75.3 million pounds of food from local communities in all 50 states. The District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands were also included in the drive. Since its conception in 1993, total donations have surpassed 1.6 billion pounds of food. If you would like to participate, donating is as easy as leaving a letter in the mail. Customers are instructed to leave their non-perishable food donations in a bag near their mailbox on Saturday, May 12th, before their letter carrier arrives that day. Special bags will be provided by letter carriers days prior to the drive. Or if you miss your carrier, you can bring it into your local post office where they also have donation bins. A 104-year-old Australian biologist who drew international attention to his right to die case ended his life in Switzerland earlier today. The British-born scientist said this week that he'd been contemplating the idea of suicide for about 20 years, but only started thinking about it for himself after his quality of life deteriorated over the last year. He cited a lack of mobility, doctor's restrictions, and an Australian law prohibiting him from taking his own life among his complaints, but he was not ill. Assisted suicide is legal in Switzerland where the procedure is available for anyone who acknowledges in writing that they are willing to take their lives willingly. But the practice is frowned upon by many doctors and some others who say it should be reserved for the terminally ill. Goodall and his supporters want the practice to be more accepted as a legitimate choice for elderly people in sound mind. Hundreds of people travel to Switzerland every year to take their lives, and the number of assisted suicides has been growing fast. Nine years ago, there were 297, and by 2015, the figure had more than tripled to 965. Nearly 15% of the cases last year were people under 65 years old. Goodall ended his life with an intravenous drip of phenobarbital, a chemical often used as an anesthetic but which is lethal in excessive doses. While Beethoven's Ninth Symphony played in the background, his last words before losing consciousness were this is taking an awfully long time, but he died shortly thereafter. Goodall had requested that his body be donated to medicine or his ashes sprinkled locally. And that was the lunch break for today. I'm Bree Walling. For your twice daily news fix, head over to the Naples Herald YouTube channel and subscribe. Leave us a comment to let us know your thoughts on the news or what you would like to hear about. The lunch break airs Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. right here at NaplesHerald.com. And don't forget to check out our morning report that also airs Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.